Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Science and Technology Minister Naledi Pandor has released the results of the latest R&D survey. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss the survey results. Hi Keith. How much did South Africa spend on R&D in 2014-15 and which sectors show the strongest and weakest growth? Well, it was fractionally over 29 billion rand. Interestingly, that was an 8.1% increase over the previous year. Now, the sector that showed the uh, greatest um, advance, increase in uh, R&D spending was in fact the business sector. The, uh, and within the business sector, the biggest advance was by manufacturing. That does not mean that manufacturing is the biggest contributor to research and development in the South African business sector. In fact, the biggest contributor to research and development in the business sector is the financial services sector, which includes, uh, in South Africa, includes the software sector. But the manufacturing sector showed the strongest growth. And the overall growth um, of research and spending, uh, research and development spending in the business sector drove the business sector for the first time into second place in terms of driving overall research and development spending in the country uh, ahead of the tertiary education sector. First place remains uh, s the state sector. To clarify a little bit, state-owned companies are categorized by the Department of Science and Technology as being in the business sector, not the state sector. Now, who did worse uh, in terms of research and development investment in the business sector was mining and quarrying. They actually had a significant cut in their research and development spending. Uh, most other sectors of business did show increases. In some cases, uh, declines in previous years were turned around to become increases in 2014-15. What does the minister expect in terms of R&D spending going forward? In terms of percentage of gross domestic products spent on research development, that would involve an increase from 0.77% in 2014-15 to 1.5% in 2020. So the hope is, uh, the aim is to significantly increase research and development spending in South Africa over the next few years. The Minister also launched the first South African National Survey of Intellectual Property and Technology Transfer at publicly funded research institutions. What are some of the highlights of that survey? Well yes, th this was an interesting survey. It's the first one done, the, therefore they call it the baseline survey because all subsequent surveys will be compared to it. Uh, there, are, there are a number of uh, interesting discoveries uh, that uh, were made. Uh, the minister highlighted four in particular. Um, firstly, there has been an increase in the number of uh, patents, trademarks, intellectual property uh, uh, matters that are managed by publicly funded institutions. Uh, publicly funded institutions include the science councils, like the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, or MINTEC, and they include universities, research done by universities. So the number of uh, technologies being managed by these institutions uh, is increasing faster than the actual the increase in research and development spending which uh, indicates greater uh, success or greater willingness or greater readiness to move from uh, research into uh, seeking to commercialize uh, the results of that research. Uh, on average, the, 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 the survey, I should say, covered the period 2011 to 2015 and in that period, on average, 100 new technologies a year were added to the portfolios managed by South African publicly funded institutions. In that same period, uh, and, um, this is the third observation, the same period, uh, 
about 45 companies were, spin-off companies were created to commercialize and exploit uh, research and develop in development uh, innovations in South Africa. Uh, globally speaking, that's a tiny number, but it's an awful lot better than none whatsoever. And again, it indicates progress is being made. Now, the amount of money being generated is not all that great, but it still means that some money is coming in. It's interesting that about 88% of uh, the research and development uh, innovations, outcomes and innovations that are being commercialized, are being commercialized by just four institutions, indicating the uh, importance of experience in transferring technology from research institution to a commercialization agency company. And that brings us to the fourth one, which is, the uh, fourth point is that most of the people employed in technology transfer offices in South Africa, that is, to move technology from the researchers to the commercializers, from a publicly funded institution to a spin-off company, or to a already existing uh, company that licenses the new technology, the new innovation for production. Most of the people involved in this are actually quite inexperienced. They have less than four years of experience in this. Another interesting point is that the majority of people in these offices are women. Now, at first glance, you might uh, take that to be a good sign in terms of uh, uh, advancement of gender empowerment, women empowerment, etc. But the Minister of Science and Technology, who to remind everyone is now Lady Pandor, a woman herself, was a little concerned that given that uh, men can be men, that the consequence might be that they're not taking the technology transfer side of the business that seriously. That because it's a uh, woman-dominated sector, they may be unconsciously seeing it as a soft option or as a purely administrat administrative option and not realizing just how critically important it is for the uh, outcomes of their research programs. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.